All right. The more I work on the Hefty G tractor, uh, especially working on the original components, like uh, this, the differential, I realize that there's virtually no information online about these tractors and that other market gardeners might want some. So I'll try to make a bit more of an effort to document what I'm doing. This is the diff model 104040. Serial number is uh, R7008. And uh, it's nice that everything, like everything on the Hefty, it's like discrete modules joined by uh, drive, drive shaft. So if this one's bad, uh, in the worst case scenario, then I can, I can, I can, luckily for myself, I can pillage from my parts machine. But uh, if ever they were both to fail, these parts are no longer available. But uh, I can go and find some other differential to put in its place and just got to adapt the frame to, uh, to, to fit it. Um, so I feel like things are replaceable on the Hefty. Maybe you can hear my reason for wanting to open this. About once every turn, this is a horrible grinding noise. Doesn't suggest to me that I should just, you know, clean it up, throw it back on. So I've cleaned it up. Now I'm going to crack it open. We'll see what's inside and how disastrous that sound is. And maybe we'll learn something about these hacks code differentials. So this is the, the diff that, uh, to, to, to walk over to the tractor. The diff lives under this plate hangs from a quartet of bolts with spacers. There's access here for a breather, um, which I think also is supposed to double as the filling plug. And then the diff drives these half shafts, one that's headed out to the final drive on that wheel and the other one that I removed in the process. The half shafts are really cleverly made where the, the yoke here is bolted with a it holds the cross with some U-bolts so that you can actually, you can pull the whole half shaft out really easily. Um, There's some other models of Hefty, uh, Hefty G, that have a uh, completely different diff setup, but both of, both of mine are like this with the telescoping half shafts, which are, they're a splined shaft and you adjust the, uh, the track of the tractor by sliding this whole assembly in and out. In fact, you can see that I've I've had to widen mine by that much just to get the diff out. But then uh, once I did that, the diff just kind of dropped out of the bottom and I, I almost caught it before it hit the floor. So, uh, but I'm pretty sure that's not the cause of my problems within. We'll open it up and see. For comparison's sake, here's the uh, parts tractor and the diff on this one is the much more modern 204040. Serial number is uh, 829 something something. Looks like they equipped uh, the second iteration with a very modern feature called a filling plug that is larger than your pinky fingernail. So this is obviously uh, leagues more advanced and I may have to come and pillage this one. We'll see. Yeah, I uh, should have noted that in fact this spline shaft is not what drives the uh, the inner yoke of the half shaft, but there it's these flanged, splined. Is this even, yeah, this is even the right side, so that these are these are fitted on and retained by center bolt into the threaded center. So that's actually those are already removed, cleaned up. Now, on the off chance that there's a right and a wrong way to take these apart, I'll uh, just mention what I did. Is that I took this, unbolted the flange, and then pulled it using a gear puller to push it off of the center axle. Uh, I wasn't really sure what we'd find, but this outer bearing here that's housed or held in the in a shoulder here. And these are, this one is a 6207Z shielded. And this one is a Japanese NTN, I think. And the other one's a Nachi, so they're good bearings that were fitted. So that the output shaft has a shoulder at the base of the splines that seats in the outer bearing, but then it also has another bearing inboard closer to the diff that sits in the other shoulder of this, and that's what we would have pulled this off of. And uh, it's kind of handy that I chose to use the puller because it turns out that 
this is just splined into probably the bevel gear or the part of the spider that runs it. I don't know, I, I, I'm rusty on how diffs fit together and work and are made and stuff. But I'm gonna learn soon enough as I pull it apart. But uh, yeah, so I think it may have been fortunate that I pushed off of this to remove that, uh, this element. And I can also see, that yeah, probably won't show up, but there's a spot on here, the oil seal, which was what initially prompted me to start this, is that I wanted to stop this assembly from weeping or pissing oil onto the ground. And uh, definitely this oil seal's finished and I can probably save the bearing and pop it, but I'll, I'll price the bearings and see if it might be worth just replacing them as we've got it open. All right, next up. All right, here's the case opened up and uh, it's the output shaft. And I pulled this just to tempt fate to see if, in fact, elements of the diff would fall out of line and force me to. Uh, anyway, it turns out that this the spline on the inner half, the uh, part of the diff mechanism, ah, you can't really see it turning in there. Almost, not quite, not enough light. Um, at any rate, it seems to remain concentric, so there's no harm to pulling this out prematurely. And we can also see that the input drive is uh, immediately stepped down by a 90, de well, not stepped down by a bevel, but there's a 90 degree bevel, which then drives a pinion to a big gear. So it's quite a big uh, reduction ratio, at least in my opinion, ignorant of how differentials tend to work. But um, this makes sense, like it is a tractor and there is a final drive further downstream of this that further reduces it. And by having a bit shaft input speed higher means less torque through these various components. The cause of the um, crunchy noise, I can't tell entirely but definitely the input bevel gear, there's a section of it that has rust as though it sat like this with the oil level here for an extended amount of time. And although there isn't as much evidence of that same sort of oil level problem on the or rust accumulation on, on this one, there's also some wear on the teeth that uh, uh, probably won't show up in the video or not well enough. I'll pull it all apart and uh, I think I might just take it to someone who knows about these things and see if they say, oh yeah, that's bad, or it doesn't really matter. So yeah, right now it seems to turn very smoothly, but this is unsupported, whereas when the case is back on, that snugly fit into this machine casting and the the flange mounting studs on the outside are in fact welded into the case cover and there are a couple roll pins used as locating dowels but it came off all right i suspect that it's been rebuilt before because i'm not sure that a uh, blue rtv gasket existed in 1978 when this was first manufactured and uh, this shim and uh, gasket assembly looks relatively newer than uh, that vintage uh, whereas the gasket between the output flange and the case was an old uh, cardboard gasket so I suspect that it's been opened up and rebuilt uh, again all of the bearings that I've found so far are high quality Japanese bearings so uh, some of them feel it's I'm I'm not enough of a bearing wear expert to know but I'm gonna go and price them out and find out if I can afford to replace them all preventively and I'm gonna pull this off so here now on the increasingly cluttered table is the empty case and the diff mostly broken down uh, so that's the half of the case that everything sat in and this uh, journal is for the input this thing which I'm calling the input pinion shaft so it's driven by the bevel gear that's the input shaft 
and I think that one is one to one, I presume. I haven't actually counted the gears on it. I suppose I'll do that. And so the, the input bevel shaft goes in the case, supported by a bearing at either end. And this gear looks pretty good. Sorry, I'll change hands. The shadow is that visible wear, but I don't think this is likely to be the cause of the noise that I'm trying to get to the root of, especially because this one looks so good in comparison to the other half of the bevel gear, which looks so bad, which looks like this. There are sections that there's sections that are just you know cut away on the corner. I really don't know what to make of this. It's really uh, here. There's a whole bunch missing. The fi the faces that actually the faces of the gears that do the work are also and they don't look terrible. But then there are spots like this. And at any rate. It looks uh, far more suspect and on. It's not uh, terribly uh, brown, but it isn't. Uh, it's not. At any rate, it doesn't look fantastic. There are a pair of bearings in this uh, support map, yeah, or whatever this thing is called, uh, and I haven't figured out. It doesn't seem to budge pushing on the shaft through this way. So I suspect there may be a circlip under here. But uh, I wanted to shoot this video to show the face seal before I destroy it. Um, I want to replace it anyway, but it has a marking 47, 17, 44, so potentially it's metric and those are the dimensions. Uh, I haven't checked yet, but uh, I'll measure it and then destroy it and see how to if that's the case, that there may be a, a circlip preventing me from driving the, the shaft through. Uh, and there's spacer shims here, which uh, must have been in function. They, they would be set in function of getting the two halves of the, of the bevel to, uh, to mesh properly. Without with too few shims, this one could ride in too close, and with not enough shims, it would be out too far. So I'll have to find someone who knows how to verify and set those things. The rest of the diff, um, oh yeah, and the bearings I'll get back to after. The rest of the diff looks like this. If we pull off, this is just perched on top. That's one of the output shaft supports. And then we have the output half shaft from the, the top end. Which is splined in, so it's driven by one half of the the differential, the spider mechanism or gear carrier or whatever it's called. Oh yeah, the reduction is twelve to fifty nine, which works out to so twelve on this pinion on the input side, fifty nine on the ring gear or big gear of the diff housing. It's 4.22 something. All right, 12, 12 teeth, 59 teeth. And then I've got the numbers for these bearings written down somewhere. The other side of the diff looks pretty much the same. I think this one is loose too. So that's the other side. These, uh, keeping them sorted one from the other, there, one of them has a single witness mark and similarly on the housing and then the other one has a double witness mark so I can't get left and right confused and uh, the orientation of this part uh, I think I'm just gonna reference it from photos and I don't think I can get it wrong but maybe I can I'll try not to there's the other half shaft 
those I've also been, they're likely interchangeable, but I've been trying to keep them straight by only removing one at a time. So the, the differential mechanism with the, you can just see one of the gears of the diff in the center. And so there's gotta be, so right now the other half would be turning freely the opposite way beneath. And I don't think I'm gonna take that inner part of the diff apart. There was no roughness, there's no play. It just feels perfect. If I take it apart, it'll be out of curiosity more than anything. And so that part, it looks to me like the, uh, the weakness is either failed bearings in here. It still feels, even with it all apart like this, I still feel a little bit of irregularity when I spin that, if it's mounted carefully. So I'm gonna pop that out. Those bearings for sure are gonna replace. These two bearings I'm gonna replace. Uh, the other bearings maybe, maybe not. And uh, hopefully I'm gonna find bad bearing in there. And then I'm gonna take this input bevel gear to someone who knows about these things and ask what they think. And uh, then either I'll scavenge from the other or, uh, or maybe get this, this gear repaired or another one made, we'll see. I'll let you know. These are the bearings. If you have to reorder without uh, beforehand, the pinion shaft is what I'm calling this thing. So this bearing and the lower one are 6305s with a single shield Z. And then the output shaft, which, which is uh, each of the output shaft flange housing, housing thingies has a, an inner larger diameter and an outer smaller diameter bearing. One of them is 6009. The other is 6207. I think the 6009 is the bigger one. And in both cases, they're shielded on one face or one shield is popped out. If you have to buy ZZ, I think you can usually just carefully uh, eliminate one of the shields and that way they'll get oil bathed from the inside. And I'll try to get the, um, the dimensions for these oil seals and this oil seal once I pop them out. Okay. Well, it sure is nice to be right once in a while, and uh, I was definitely right to sacrifice this and pop it off because inside we can see that this is actually mounted with a. Uh, oh dear, it's not coming out very well on the camera. There's a conical bearing, conical roller bearing, and then actually a nut, and uh, the nut is held in place by a, a folded over lock washer. So how exactly they folded it over is a bit of a mystery to me. There's also a bunch of damage on the face of the nut and uh, maybe I can move this to where there's a bit more light. So there. Can you see in any better? Only marginally. Alright, the, the nut yeah, that's more like it. All right, doesn't look fantastic in there. And even the race of the roller bearing is collapsed at one spot. So definitely um, I want to get this part, figure out exactly what's going on. Again, it suggests that there was a rebuild done at some point, and this may have been where they uh, failed. So we'll see. So here is the input hub assembly finally broken all the way down and it's amusing to me to note just how much this piece looks like an axle hub from a, a trailer hub. I think it's probably machined very slightly better but um, as you can see, there, there's still, still two uh, conical races pressed in, uh, receivers for this one and this one, which would have been down so that this thing sandwiches and the compression is uh, adjusted until the two conical bearings run acceptable play. So you screw this down, 
pulling them together on top of this, which has a tab that runs in a keyway. And then you fold the two little ears up using your magical backwards hammer uh, to then lock the... And then apparently you bash the face of this nut repeatedly with a variety of different implements until it looks just like this. I think that's the OEM spec, is uh, repeated bashings. And so that the spot where the race looks like it got hit by, when the cage got hit by one of the bashings, um, doesn't actually seem to necessarily have damaged the bearing, but I think these two, these two roller bearings for sure should be replaced. But more importantly, now I have this in my hands. It's, it's really kind of depressing. It, you know, maybe the original one failed and someone slightly better equipped and just as stupid as me decided to make their own and this was the best they could manage maybe i don't know looks you know if i managed to actually make a gear that looked like this i'd be pretty pleased with myself but if this is the oem gear and it ended up like this it's not great you know the folks who built these tractors the holt and axle company who built the hefty g's and hefty f's this was supposed to be their, like, this was their business. They were the Holtan Axle Company. They built transmissions and diffs for other people and then decided they would build the tractor, too. So I got to assume that this is either um, serious wear from maladjustment or abuse or, uh, or someone broke the original input gear and kludged this one together. But for me, it looks like I, I'm going to go consult some more knowledgeable neighbors and uh, machinists and I'll probably also pull the pull the differential from the parts tractor bring it in here and tear it down and uh, maybe end up using it because I suspect getting a new helical bevel gear if in fact that's what these things are called I suspect getting one made would be expensive and I'm not sure that I'm gonna ever feel confident putting this one back in but who knows maybe I'll just suck it up and uh, in the interest of completeness and for reference material this uh, face seal and lip seal for the shaft that goes here that I was 47 17 44 is not what it is at all um, it's imperial you know, of course it's not metric it's from Wisconsin from 1978 it's one inch OD uh, no, 1 inch ID for the shaft and uh, 1 and 15 sixteenths OD and it's quarter inch thick. Voila, you don't have to destroy yours to order one.